Joining me today on the Capitol Show, Colonel West Martin, former senior anti-terrorism officer from Coalition Forces in Iraq. Uh, you are most welcome on the Capitol Show, Colonel. How are you today? Great. I'm doing well. Uh, the media tells us that an Israeli airstrike uh, killed a top Iranian general as it targeted a building near the Iranian embassy in Damascus. Your approach? My feeling is, I, I was just glad to hear that. Is I, when I heard my old spar sparring partner, Qasem Soleimani, was mm. taken up by President Trump. He had it coming. Both of them had it coming. Mm. And it was a good mission both times. Mm. But uh, but he is a major, uh, this is a major blow for Iran. Uh, General Mohammad Reza Zahedi, he was the commander of Iran's Islamic Revolution Guard. And... Uh, do you uh, agree that there is a transparency or there is a collaboration with uh, the Syrian regime to uh, have this target in hand? Iran and Syria have been tied together for a long time. I, I, I was saying this a decade ago when Maliki came to power and Iran was shipping all that. Uh, Maliki came to power in Iraq and yeah. Iran was shipping all that equipment through Iraqi airspace and over land backing up uh, the, uh, the, the family uh, in uh, President Assad in Syria. Mm. He would have fallen from power had he not been supported by Iran and he had not been supported by Putin in Russia. Absolutely. And Hezbollah, who was down in Lebanon, pushing towards Israel in control in Lebanon, received orders to turn to the north and go back up in there and reinforce Assad. Assad was on his way down. And there was only one reason the IRGC, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, had its code force in Syria, and that was to disrupt and uh, try to destroy Israel. The name of the code force, it means Jerusalem force. They mm. are there for one purpose, one purpose only. And congratulations for to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu for taking out the IRGC brigadier. Yeah. Uh, do you think that Assad is sophisticated by the influence of Iran right now? He wants to have some uh, some uh, dignity or like uh, sovereignty uh, in the, his country. His country is divided. What do you think he is thinking right now? What is his uh, position? Can you two, two, give us two, a theory? The two words I have never put together before was Assad and dignity. Uh, somehow I find those two just don't mix. Mm -hmm. It's like Assad and uh, honesty or integrity. He is playing to Iran. He's determined to keep control of his country. And he is playing to Iran because he knows as long as he pleases Iran, he will go ahead and have be allowed to remain in power. Mm. Uh, Time magazine just reported that uh, uh, officials from the Biden administration are conveying messages to the Iranian government that the United States has nothing to do with this act attack. What uh, is your approach on the uh, U.S. Uh, stance uh, about uh, uh, Two things. One, it's true. The Biden administration did not have anything to do with this attack. Mm. We have a weak administration, and it's an embarrassment when the president of the United States confuses uh, General Sisi of Egypt as mm. being the president of Mexico. Uh, that's where we stand in the United States. Right. We have our administration and the Obama administration and the Clinton administration has been so busy appeasing Tehran that they have not understood what's really going on in mm. the Middle East and what's going on in the world. This statement saying we had nothing to do with it was an act of, please don't get upset with us. We had nothing to do with it. We want to still appease you. They just gave gave back billions of dollars again. How many times are we going to do this when that money is being used to fund terrorism through the Middle East and through the world? Everywhere, yes, yes. Uh, do you think that the, this action will lead to a revenge? Um, oh, it will. It against, will. Against uh, Israel. The, the, that because that's Tehran, that's Ayatollah uh, and Raisi, they will go ahead and do that because that's who they are, that's what they will do. But, but they, they never, they never really, attacked uh, Israel uh, itself. 
Oh, oh, they'll do it on Israel. And the whole thing of uh, the attack last October by Hamas, that Iran was behind that. The intent was originally to send Hamas north mm. to uh, engage in a very brutal attack that would force Netanyahu to take a very extreme measure. And mm. he did. Mm. Iran was convinced once Netanyahu was fully engaged at Hamas to the south, they would release Hezbollah from the north. There's just one problem with the Raisi's line of thought. Netanyahu mm. is a former commando. He is going to keep track of what's behind him when mm. he moves forward. And that's what caught Iran by surprise, is once again, Israel was ready for a war on all fronts. If we will have an escalation between Israel and Iran, who will pay the price? Uh, and how will a proxy, Iran's proxy will act? like Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis uh, in Yemen, and uh, Hamas in Gaza? Uh, um, Hamas and Hezbollah, well, Hamas is already fully committed, and they're getting whipped really bad. Hamas has been doing limited attacks compared to their capabilities. They will release full force. Iran, if Iran and Israel were to go head-to-head -head with each other, Iran would be in serious problems. Iran cannot match Israel in any of the battle domains, air, land, sea, space, and cyberspace. Mm. And even cyberspace alone, Israel mm. has the capabilities to shut Iran down completely. Iranian Air Force is no match for Israeli Air Force. And th th there would be no match. The thing is, you've got between Iran and Israel, you've got Iraq, you've got Jordan. Mm. So as a result... Uh, there's battle space uh, area there that cannot be crossed. Otherwise, you'll have a full Middle East war. Uh, you served, uh, you talked about Iran, Iraq now, uh, but you served as a counterterrorism officer. How safe are American troops uh, uh, and the American bases in Iraq right now? Uh, what is the next strategic step for the Biden administration to protect these troops? The Biden administration needs to enhance the force protection, and they understand that. Mm. The the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and the uh, uh, the chiefs themselves understand what needs to be done. Mm. But the question is, will Biden do it? There's going to be more missile attacks on American bases, and even without the Israeli atta attack in Syria, there will be more missile attacks because Iraq itself is a puppet of Iran right now. Mm. We once had a balance of power in the Middle East, and we were told at the Pentagon for decades, do not disrupt that fine balance of power between Iraq and Iran. Mm. And mm. George uh, W. Bush, unlike his father, decided to take down Saddam. Saddam was not a good person. He was probably the most charismatic man I have ever looked at face to face. He could, he could win people over, but then he'd throw them in the wood chipper. He was not a good person, but he did maintain balance of power. We went in and we totally disrupted that. Mm -hmm. Then we turned basically Iraq over to Iran and with the Maliki government and all the subsequent governments after that, a body was probably about the only stable one that was trying to find peace. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, uh, I want to follow up. Um, I want to go to a local uh, subject. Uh, I mean, uh, is the United States now is vulnerable to a potential uh, uh, terrorist attack, terrorist plot? There are many factors uh, that could affect the occurrence of such a terrorist uh, scheme. And what, can we con this consider the Baltimore uh, accident as an accident or a plot? But that was an accident, but... Hmm. When I was the anti-terrorism officer for all coalition forces in Iraq, I was always on the vanguard looking for any possibility that could be exploited. Mm. The terrorists have now seen what one ship can do to an entire harbor. When the Francis Scott Key Bridge came down, that shut down Baltimore Harbor, and they finally got a little bit of the waterway open. It, we have critical infrastructures. Mm. And highway uh, transportation system is one. Now, I guarantee you, the terrorist networks have looked, well, all we got to do is hijack a large freighter ship who really doesn't have much small, but small arms protection, if that, and then mm. take it right into uh, the, the superstructure of a, a bridge, knock it down. 
And yeah. it's not just the United States. Uh, they're always looking for a means to exploit. Um, Osama bin Laden and his followers realized with the new uh, airlines, uh, jets carrying fuel in the wings, they could bring down the World Trade Center. Now people have seen what one uh, ship that did lose power, and it did alert the port authorities, and the police was alerted, so the bridge was able to be sealed off by the police, mm. and tugboats were trying to get to the scene to stop it. But mm. 90 seconds is not much of an advance notice. Mm. So we're going to have to enhance port security and ships coming and going. Yeah, yeah, this is gonna be a challenge. Uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, go through uh, the war, the two war doctrine that the Pentagon has declared two year, years ago. Yani it means the ability of the United States to fight two wars at the same time in both Asia and Euro Asia and Europe. But now there is many conflicts in the Middle East, in Haiti, uh, uh, in Niger, maybe. So does the U.S. Department of Defense need a new war doctrine, in your opinion? What we need to do is go back and re-enhance the, the two-war doctrine. We were always trained, and ever since World War II, we realized we're going to have to fight Germany and Japan at the same time, and we did successfully. Of course, we had great allies like Great Britain, and even at that time, Russia uh, was a great ally in the amount of uh, pressure they took off from the West. With their, their, Well, Germans always talk about the Russian front, how hideous it was. So we did have allies, Australia, uh, New Zealand, and even China at that time. Mm. Now, some of those same countries, Russia is a very serious threat with Ukraine. Mm. For some reason, our Congress is not recognizing that Zelensky is offering us a solution on how to deal with Russia in the future. Because Russia can't even take Ukraine. How are they going to take NATO? And Ukraine is bleeding off from Russia all the time. Even mm. Jung Un is having to send artillery shells up to the Soviet uh, correction. I keep saying Soviet Union up to, and that's what Putin is trying to recreate uh, up to Russia. Kim Jong Un, when I was in Korea in 2010, he had 15,000 artillery weapons on the his side of the DMZ. Many of them pointing at the Greater Seoul metropolitan area. Mm. That is a very serious threat. Mm -hmm. The artillery the shells are now being sent up to uh, Russia to shoot at Ukrainians. So the threat uh, in Korea is going down. We have the threat with China, and China is in a very difficult position now because of that two, uh, mm -hmm. two, uh, two parents, one child policy, it is causing all kinds of disruption to the country. So if they don't finish their Belt and Road Initiative and their aggression soon, they're going to be a shell. Mm. And then you move over to the Middle East, and we cause that chaos by taking down Saddam. Yeah, this is a critical uh, moment. Uh, my last question, and finally, what uh, is your, um, uh, what can you see the future of Iran can be? I saw you in an event for the uh, Iranian resistance. Uh, uh, can we apply democracy into uh, Iran? Uh, what the West can do to help the Iranian people? The, democracy was working until 1953, uh, mm -hmm. and then the, the CIA and British Petroleum got involved uh, and decided, no, we're going to put the Shah back in power. That caused a uh, ca uh, uh, avalanche of problems that we're still living with today. Democracies, uh, there was a short, brief attempt before the Ayatollah uh, Khomeini came back into the country. There was a chance. The Iranian people are very fine people and very intelligent democracy will work there and uh, we're seeing democracy in indonesia working very well a muslim country can have democracy it that is not a contradiction mm. uh, and it, the iranian people are ready for it the united states really needs to stop trying to appease the religious extremists the fundamentalists who's controlling tehran and start working with the Iranian people. Now, the Iranian people, and I've written an article in years past, they need to unite. You have the National Council of Resistance of Iran. Mm. You have the Arab, uh, correct, yeah, the Arab uh, uh, what, population what? In, the, in the southwest. Yeah. You have the Belushi. You have the Kurds up north. Ben Franklin once said, 
about the American Revolution, united we stand, divided we fall. Mm -hmm. Those elements all need to come together. Mm -hmm. uh, and the demonstrations throughout Iran are proven the people are ready to get rid of the power. Mm -hmm. But they need support. Yeah, we hope they get the support and they will have freedom soon. Colonel Martin, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, um, you, we appreciate your contribution to freedom, democracy, and uh, uh, every aspect you do, every work you do in military anti-terrorism. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. Till next time. Thank you.